my name is Nicholas Sacco, and the country I chose is the Bahamas. Before I go into detail about um, the topics we need to cover, I wanted to give a little background information about the country uh, to help get a better understanding. So what is the Bahamas? The Bahamas is a chain of islands located um, south of Florida. So it is about a three hour and 15 minute plane ride from where I live, which is in New York. It's located in the Atlantic Ocean, so it's it gets very humid and hot down there, especially in the summer, but also year round. And recently it has also become an independent island. The first topic that I want to speak about is the history of the Bahamas. And the first people that came here were the Puritans. and the Puritans came here for religious freedom because they were being persecuted in their homelands, but the only thing they actually was met by was food shortages. The second group was the pirates, and they came in search of treasures. Because, because the, the Bahamas is this long chain of islands, they thought this was a perfect place to hide treasure or where they could find treasure. And they also used the ports to intercept trade and steal from merchants. Um, and then Nassau, which is the main part of the Bahamas, was um, destroyed as French and S Spanish troops fought over this land because they believed that this was a very b valuable asset which could help their homeland, so they fought over it. Okay, and then history from the Civil War to tourism. Um, before the Civil Wars, the Bahamas took part in the slave trade. They tr often brought in slaves from Africa and traded um, the goods that they got and they allowed people to use their ports. Mm -hmm. Slaves were brought from West Africa to the Bahamas to work on shores as fishermen and um, to do other slave jobs like cleaning, cooking, um, etc. in the homes. Um, this is why 92% of the population in the Bahamas actually identifies its roots as African. Um, and then the Civil War really helped the Bahamas economy because Britain had to make a long way back and forth to the Americas, so they, they often stopped in the Bahamas and traded um, their goods for Bohemian cotton and things like that. And then the main focus of my thing I really want to talk about is tourism. So the start of tourism was the Hotel and Steamship Service Act. And what this did was it um, really opened the Bahamas to the outside world and allowed for uh, construction of hotels and subsidized services. Now, the second one is the Bohemian economy. As some people don't realize, the Bahamas is actually the richest country in the Caribbean islands. But the problem is that this country is only dispersed between the top 50%. So, this, this graphic right here shows that this red line is the top 10% of um, money in the Bahamas. This line is the middle 40%. And the bottom line is the bottom 50%. So... Even though it's the richest country, they do have their problems because the bottom 50%, which is half the population, are very poor and don't get much help. Um, and then the Bahamas really makes its money in two ways, through tourism and banking. They are home to many places like the Atlantis and Baja Mar, which are great vacation spots. And um, they are a great offshore banking place, where, which is why they make money like that. But, but for the lower income people, their main source of income is fishing and farming, and this is because just because the ports are so good there. And then politics in the Bahamas. The reason I chose this is because in countries like that, you tend to see corruption in these, but it's actually not as corrupted here as I thought. Um, the Bahamas is part of the Commonwealth Nations, headed by Elizabeth II. It's independence in 1973, and their Independence Day is actually celebrated on July 10th. Elections are actually shown to be pretty fair here. I did a lot of research on that topic, and it doesn't seem to be much corruption here. Um, and women also play a major role as the vice president and president of the Senate, which uh, this is the Senate right here, are women. And um, their, their elections take place every five years like uh, any other nation. And now towards religion. The Bahamas is 80% Protestant, um, and it's one of the most deeply religious countries. And from my experience, when I was taking taxis or other transportation towards my resorts, um, all the people there were very religious. They gave thanks to God a lot and just attributed their opportunities to God. And then this picture is um, 
the Fox Hill Day Festival. And what is that is, is when all the Bahamian people go to church and give thanks to God and then they celebrate through Bahamian culture such as food or music. Now the second part of my presentation is um, how the Bahamas connects to some of the texts that we read in this class. So the first text that I want to um, talk about is Stuart Hall's Cultural Identity and Dysphoria. And Stuart Hall's Cultural Identity and Dysphoria doesn't talk about the Bahamas in particular, but it contains a lot of information that is related to nations like the Bahamas. And one line really stuck out to me in particular, and that was that this, this diaspora identify, identities are those which are constantly producing and reproducing themselves anew through transformation and difference, the blends of taste. And why I really thought this um, related to the Bahamas was that um, many people are coming in and out of the Bahamas because of tourism, whether they come from America, Asia, or Europe, and in combination with the people that already live there, um, culture is being um, intertwined and really changing. And this this um, talks about the idea of being and becoming because the being is the past, the people that are there, and the becoming is this new culture that evolves as these cultures interact through tourism in the Bahamas. And the second text that I used was Edouard Glissant's The Unformed De Seen Diversity of the World. And this talks about creolizing and um, cultures coming into contact with another. And he mentions this idea of cre creolization as um, the meaning and harmony or disharmony of cultures um, when they come in contact. In other words, it just means that when two lifestyles come into contact, if they completely agree with each other or disagree with each other, they affect one another and change each other in, in a sense that it co um, furthers crossbreeding. And the main thing that he talks about, though, that really connects to the Bahamas is this idea of globalization. And he writes that the wretched other side, globalization, the imposition of multinational corporations with ethos of bestial profit. What this means is that countries through globalization are really looking just to make money and help their economies. Bahamas, so me and my family have been here almost every year since I was five and I've met a lot of the people through either taxi rides or going into the um, parts of the country and I've developed a love for the island and its culture. You see things that you really don't see here and the way I want um, the way I'm gonna tell you about my connection is through a story and it was back in 2016 when uh, the NCAA tournament was going on I know it sounds like it doesn't have anything to do with it but there was a Bohemian player there that um, was in the final four and the pride that they took in this player and um, they're telling me about his roots and how he was playing with the milk carton and um, that's what he had to play basketball. It really showed that the pride and culture in the Bahamas is is well appreciated, and it was something that I wanted to learn greatly about. And um, why I chose my four sections, Re I chose religion because the people I met there have had seemed to be very religious. Um, economics, I'm a finance major, so it's just something that I always want to look at. Politics, as I said before, it's I thought it would be very corrupt, but it isn't. And history, it often just gives us a better understanding of the nation today and how it has developed. And then beyond the classroom, this project and understanding Bahamas has allowed me to get a, a better understanding of cultures. It has allowed me to open my viewpoints to ideas and broaden my horizon. And besides culture, when I like work in groups or something, I've been more open-minded to open topics because through these texts and understanding the text and the meaning of all these, I really see, you can see where other people come from and uh, appreciate what they have to say. And you don't have to agree with everything, but you can develop an understanding and use it in your own life to um, not always be biased in what you believe. And if you have a more well-rounded uh, approach to everything, you can not be smarter, but um, be more knowledgeable in your areas that you study. And then this is just my work cited, and that's the end. Thank you.